Yeah, now we're going to be moving over to another category of Sharia law. We have, I have Lloyd De Young with me again. Most of you, when you think of Islam, you think of it as a religious system. You think it as a, it's a religion like any other, like all the other religions, like our religion uh, or our faith. But Islam is much more than a religion. It is a political system, and we forget that side of it. In fact, in many respects, for many Muslims around the world, it is more political than it is religious. It's more political than it is theological. Not all Muslims, but many of them see it as an entity that must be implemented and imposed, if need be, in our day and in our place, wherever they are. So that side of it is lost in our discussions. Lloyd is going to unpack that for us today. He's going to show us why this political ideology is absolutely important. We need to be aware of it. We need not just walk away from it. We need to also engage with it. So Lloyd, thanks for coming on board again. Thanks for uh, joining us. Unpack this political side of Islam. Help us to see what Sharia says about its politicization. Islam defines itself as a political system. It does not define itself in its own sources as a religion. We do that, unfortunately, to our detriment. Islam defines itself as a deen. A deen is a political system. We're going to look at that definition today to understand Islam as a political system, which you will see is a totalitarian political system, not much different to things like communism, fascism, Nazism. So let me share my screen and we'll get started on that. So we're going to be talking about rules, regulations, and legalistic thinking. As I've said, Islam is a deen. A deen is a political system. The Sharia is the Talmud of Islam. And this means that the Imams are the Pharisees of Islam. Now, Shari, plural, Shawari, a clearly defined way, a main road, a highway, situated on a main road, at the side of a road, right? Previously, Shari was the term for a main arterial road. This is from the Encyclopedia of Islam. Now, notice here you have lawgiver, characteristically Muhammad, in his function as a model and an exemplar of the law. So Muhammad is the model upon which the Sharia is based. You see, because you have Allah who does not come to earth, and you had to have his representative on earth, his viceroy on earth, who was Muhammad, who acted out this law of Allah, as you saw, which includes intimidation, assault, force of arms, gang activity, as well as breaking and entering. So we've seen this is the, the model of behavior that Muhammad has now brought to the earth. And of course, Allah is the lawgiver, but Muhammad is also the lawgiver, which means that they are treated synonymously within the Sharia. They are the same. Effectively, that is shirk. Now, Sharia, plural, Sharai, a prophetic religion in its totality. Within Muslim discourse, the rules and regulations governing the lives of Muslims. That is legal administration, that is politics, that is not religion. The rules and regulations, those are legal terms. Notice Islamic jurisprudence. So let me continue from here. Let's look at the purpose of the law. So Islamic law deals with two broad aspects of regulation. Laws dealing with man's duty to Allah called ibadat. These are the five pillars of Islam, the profession of the faith, prayer, fasting, almsgiving, and pilgrimage. If you go through the earliest, from what I've read, um, examples of the five pillars, jihad was one of the five pillars. Zakat was added last, later. Now, generally, these five pillars, that's the profession of the faith, the shahada, the prayer, the fasting, the almsgiving, and pilgrimage, these are generally dealt with first in the manuals of fiqh. Laws governing human relations are called mu'amalat, or transactions. This is seen as transactional, effectively like commerce, like a commercial transaction, a contract, if you will, such as marriage, divorce, and commerce. Those all fall under transactional things that happen. Again, think commerce. Yeah. So ibadat is submissive obedience to a master. Notice the connotation of slavery. This is very different to accepting the Holy Spirit, accepting Jesus into your heart, and wanting to be good because you've been guided by the Holy Spirit. This is submission, true submission to as a slave would. And notice, submissive obedience to a master and therefore religious practice corresponding in law approximately to the ritual of Muslim law. Now notice within, within Judaism, for instance, they are also religion of law, as, it, as Islam is a religion of law. You have the ceremonial law, the moral law, and the civil law. Notice Islam makes no distinction between those three. Christianity only has moral law. It is not a religion of law. It does not bring civil law. Islam brings civil law, moral law, 
and ceremonial law, and it makes no distinction. The religious acts which bring the creature into contact with his creator. So in other words, following these rules, rule-based, this is exactly like the Pharisees in the Bible, exactly like them. Following these rules, you will get salvation. It is rules-based worship. Let's continue. Submissive, meaning allowing yourself, willing to be controlled, inclined or ready to submit, to yield to the authority of another, unresistingly obedient. These are negative connotations. These mean that you're a puppet in the hands of someone. Let's continue. Let's look at the word deen. So deen is a socio-political system. It is not defined as religion. For instance, deen embodies perspectives on existence, life, society, and a socio-political system. Islam is a complete and competing ideology. It competes with Western morals. It competes with Western standards, it competes with Western political systems. It wants to replace them. So it is a complete and competing ideology and a system of life and society, just like communism was a competing system of life and society and politics and warfare. Islam is no different. A political ideological system. For Muslims, Islam emerges as a superior ideology which towers over all other isms towers over anything. It is supposedly so vastly superior. And of course, so superior that they're too ashamed to actually open the books and read and show it to us. And notice it is a political framework for managing mankind's affairs. Let's get more specific. So the linguistic meaning. The famous classical Arabic dictionaries, Al-Qamus al-Muhit and Lisan al-Arab, state there are four meanings of the word deen. Al-Qamus is the basis for Lane's lexicon, for instance. Lisan al-Arab is the oldest of the Arabic dictionaries, and it is about 20 volumes long. So they state there are four meanings of deen. The first meaning in these dictionaries is subjugation and dominance, which includes ownership, government, administrative or legislative authority. This is not religious by any stretch. What are your thoughts, Jay? Subjugation and dominance, government, administration, ownership. Is this religious? No, well, this is what, this is fascinating because this is slavery. Basically, this it's is Allah who is the master and humanity who are his slaves, what do slaves do? Slaves subjugate and they domin are dominated. They are subjugated by the master. They have no recourse. They have no right to talk to, to argue, to critique, and certainly to disobey or even to reject. That a slave that cannot do. But, a, uh, uh, but anybody who is free from slavery, as we are in Christianity, we do not have this type of relation with our God. He is our Abba, our Daddy, our Father. Completely, completely different than what we're talking about here. The relationship between our God and us is we are sons and daughters of God. Sons and daughters can, can uh, confront, can critique, can, yes, even reject our Daddy. The, great, the beautiful story of the prodigal son is a beautiful example of just that. That does not exist according to what you're saying here. The deen of Islam is absolute subjugation. It is complete dominance of a master to a slave. Yeah. And of course, you've got the all-powerful Allah, who is so powerful, he cannot A, come to earth, and B, have a son. So he can do everything except <laughs> apparently those two things. Tongue in cheek again, so, I see. You're, putting, you're showing the, the complete contradiction in terms. But God bless you. Thanks for that. So let's continue. The second definition in the linguistic meaning of deen is obedience and bondage, which includes subordination and dominance, subordination and dominance under the power of others. So dominance under the power of others. You are subordinated under the power of others, the political control and power of others. So we have subjugation and dominance, which includes ownership, government, administrative or legislative authority. Those are legal and political authorities. That is not religion. This is politics. Then obedience and bondage. Slavery. Bondage is slavery. You just mentioned slavery, and there you have bondage, which includes subordination and dominance under the control of others. Then three, rules and regulations. Legal rules, the Sharia, which includes doctrine, ideology, tradition, and notice, it says here, all religion, not and religion, all religion. Religion is an optional meaning within the term deen. Deen is a political and legal system. It does not mean religion. Then finally, reward and repayment, justice and accountability. In other words, punishment if you don't follow the Sharia and reward if you do. So reward and repayment. So these are the definitions of the word deen. Islam is a deen. It is not a religion, not the way we think of it. Notice religion is an optional understanding. And technically, 
in terms of Islam, Islam exists to destroy Christianity. It is anti-religion. Now, the first meaning is subjugation or dominance, administrative or legislative authority to put pressure to be obedient or using power to enslave or to make one obedient. So using political force to command the right through force, violence, if need be, to enslave or make one obedient. In Arabic, intuhum tadanu means I subjugated them so they obeyed me. Zintuhu also means I ruled or governed upon him. This is a political action of a political party. Thus, the word Dayan is used to indicate a person who dominates and rules over a state, rules over a nation or a tribe. This is a political role. It is not a religious role. Islam is not a religious system. It is a political system. The second meaning is obedience and bondage, subordination and domination by someone and bearing humiliation under subjugation and power of others, bearing humiliation under the power and subjugation of others, those others being the Muslims. The obedient tribe is called Qawmun Dainun. Here, Adin does not mean religion. It means obedience. I'll pause here, Jay. No, I'm, uh, it's fascinating. I just look at number four here. You're going to get that, I think, reward and repayment. But even the reward and repayment, I assume that that meant the salvation in heaven. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It means accountability and justice. It, just so you're still... Even your reward and repayment is still one of subordination and dominance. Yes. So let's have a look. Now, unfortunately, we in the West, we view Islam as religion. And this is a mistake. Unfortunately, we have, we have this thing completely backwards. Notice, in terms of that, those, that list that we have, the list of priorities we've just seen, religion sits at number 10 in that list. Prior to that, we have ownership, government, administrative and legislative authority, subordination, dominance, doctrine, ideology, ideology, tradition, and then comes religion. 99.979% of our focus is on number 10. We are flat out ignoring the other 11. So your thoughts, Jay? Well, I mean, it's obvious. This is a, uh, we have been looking up the wrong area. We have been going to the, the wrong definition of Islam, and that's to our detriment. This is interesting. If you look at the other 11 out of the 12 uh, in the Dean of Islam, they all have to do with jurisdiction of coming under subjugation of the other. And the other, of course, would be the, the, the authorities that be. But it's fascinating. We always want, and we've done this in, in Christianity, we separated church and state. You're saying here that religion is subsumed by the state. It is part of the state. So the politics controls and subsumes the religion so that one in even religion, as we would define it, is under subjugation of the political sphere. Technically, they will state, uh, in the words of Al-Ghazali, the religion, the state exists to impose the religion, but there's 99% state and 1% religion. Because yeah, if you think... We would call doctrine and ideology <clears throat> part of religion. In fact, that's how we would define religion. It is made up of doctrines and ideologies. How their practice is then what we would have put into the other 10 or other nine in this case. But in what you're, but it looks like they're the, 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 the idea of control and absolute control are the most important in this list that you have here ideology, doctrine, and religion come way down the list. Yeah. And then to end off, this has a Hebrew slash Jewish origin. It is not the only source of origin, but Dean means law in Hebrew. Now, yes, of course, you can find five or six or a dozen other definitions. I fully understand that. But Dean means law in Hebrew. Islam is the Dean ul haq meaning the truth or the right, the religion, as we would say, of truth, the religion of right. No, it's the Dean of right, the Dean of truth. Conversely, this makes Christianity the Dean al batil and Judaism are the Dean al batil the false, the void religion, the abrogated religions. So the empty religions. These are also, al batil means false, void, worthless. But battle is also one of the names of Satan. Therefore, with this definition, Christianity and Judaism are the religions of Satan. Deen is also the same word as the Jewish hok, the statutes. So the statutes that are right, the laws that are correct. This is, again, if you want to think of it, this is this deviation by the Pharisees, the Phariseeism. This is, so I'll leave this here, Jay. This is helpful, Lloyd. We have always assumed that Islam is very similar to Christianity or Judaism. 
when in reality it's not at all. It's very much a political entity. It's very much a political animal. They, Islam has always seen itself as a practice, a religious practice on earth that must be imposed if need be. And the way you impose it is by looking at what the prophet did. And when you look at the prophet's life, notice he didn't say much that he didn't say much about religion at all. He said very little about God. What did he say? Look at all the traditions, the hadith of what he said. The traditions are all do this, don't do this, impose this, do not impose this. It's basically how to walk, talk, eat, drink, sleep 24-7. That's why Muslims go to the hadith. That's why they like the hadith. That's why they go to the sharia, because the sharia is the working out of the hadith and the working out of the sira and the tafsir and the tahrik. It's working it out in day-to-day -day life. How you work it out and how you put it together is what you are doing right now with Sharia. So in the, the, when you talk about the Dean of Islam, I can understand why the Dean is very much the taking of what Muhammad said, what he did, and imposing it on everyday structures, everyday common uh, common rules and regulations. And that's why when we look at Islam, it is so full of rules and regulations. We're overwhelmed by how legalistic it is, but then that's its whole entity. It is basically a structured faith on how man and women are to live on earth and in community and under a kilafit. So if that is the case, you can then understand why of the 12 categories that you put up there, doctrine, theology, religion are way down near the bottom. They're not that important because it's not so much who you are in vis-a-vis -vis your God, you're a slave to God. In Christianity, however, it's everything is about our relationship to God. Everything we do is about in relationship to God. All that Jesus did when he came and lived those 33 years on earth was how he worked out in relationship to mankind. Christianity is a relationship. The whole theology is based on relationship between God and man. Islam has no relationship. God never enters time and space. He never has come to earth. He never died on the cross. He never did anything for us. Therefore, what you're to do, the deen that is absolutely important, I can see what you're saying now, it is to how to act out how God implements his khilafah on earth. And that is through people like believers. And if there is a whole hierarchy, starting with the khilaf, down coming down to the ulama, then down to the ummah. All of them are to act out these many different categories 24-7 uh, every day of their life. So therefore, the religion is absolutely political uh, because it has to engage at that level with everyone at every time. Thanks so much. This is so good. And I hope people are listening to this. It's not a theological and, uh, precepts like we have in Christianity. Do not equate Islam with Christianity. Christianity is a faith based on a relationship with God and man, a personal relationship. Each one of us has that. It's something that cannot be imposed. It can only be chosen. It's something that impacts on every area of life. That is true, but it is done voluntarily. It is not done with edicts and rules and regulations and obligations and with subjugation or dominance. No, it is a relationship. It, it, no, it is not rules and regulations. Two completely different entities, two completely different categories, starting from two completely different presuppositions. No wonder we're so different. And no wonder we keep talking past each other because we assume that we're introducing people to Jesus. We say that all the time as Christian. We're introducing people to a relationship with God. Muslims look at us blankly, they have no idea what we're talking about. There's no such thing of, of a relationship with God. Allah cannot be in relationship with us. You, as a Muslim, must do A, B, C, D, and E, and continue that, and you must do it even harshly if need be, and you must impose it if it is not so, accepted. Does, do you understand now why Muslims always say in the comments, you are lawless? Yeah, yeah, That's absolutely. One of the we are lawless and we have no idea what they're talking about. Now we do. This is good. Thanks so much. Not everybody's going to agree. Some of you are going to disagree. If you do disagree with Lloyd, for heaven's sake, show where in the text he has got it wrong. He is that is not going to happen. That is absolutely, positively <laughs> not going to okay, happen. Okay, well, God bless you, Lloyd. Thanks for coming on board. Make sure you go do comment.
Lloyd will answer and respond to your comments. Uh, this is Jay and Lloyd, thousands of miles apart. Good to be with you again. Over and out. God bless. Over and out. Thank you.